you're part of a marginalized group and you like fantasy, sci-fi, historical drama, or Disney in fact, you have probably heard the term, it's racist, but more times than you would personally care to. You will probably have heard, it's sexist, but it's ignorant, but, or even fun ones like, he's a rapist, but, he's abusive, but, or any sort of horrible thing and a but to somehow defend this statement. However, for this video, we're going to just focus on it's racist, but. The frustrating thing about the whole it's racist, but statement is that it shows how people are willing to dismiss racial issues within a show or genre that they like. And this happens for a lot of people. You don't want to think that a show that you love and really feel passionately about could have something that's so negative as racist. And you get defensive about it because to them, to, to you, that person's wrong. I even get that way sometimes when I first hear people mention that something that I like could be racist, sexist, etc. I was listening to a podcast called Fangs for Fantasy and the speaker was talking about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And what she mentioned was that while Buffy is seen as a symbol of female power and a kind of like an inspiration for women, she really is an example of female power but only for white women. And when I first heard that, I'm just like, what? You know, that doesn't really make any sense. And then she continued to say that, you know, that the, the um, portrayal of non-white characters in Buffy hasn't been the greatest. And at the first, and like, I was defensive. I was just like, no, I don't think so. But then I went back and I thought about it. Every person of color slayer, and I'm including, you know, not just black, but also Latino, Asian, every slayer we've seen who is a person of color has either died on screen or is a very stereotypical portrayal. The first slayer, um, Nikki Wood, the Chinese slayer that Spike kills in one of his flashback episodes. The only woman of color in the only females of color that we see live are two of the potential slayers, or a few of the potential slayers, who are really just annoying characters with no development. But of the strong slayers, you know, Kendra dies, um, Nikki Wood dies, the Chinese slayer dies, and yet we have Buffy, who is this important, powerful female figure, but she's also a slim white blonde. And that's an issue. However, does this mean I hate Buffy? No. I think regardless of color, she's still a very, you know, feminist female character and that there's a lot to be taken from her character and then some. However, just because I like Buffy and I feel it has a lot of positive issues, it doesn't erase that that's a problem to be acknowledged within the show. And upon reflection, I saw this in other shows I liked. Charmed, for example, only has one reoccurring black male character in San Francisco of all places. Um, Xena, Warrior Princess, while it does have, you know, some black characters that come in and out, the two people who we see training Xena, including the one, the, um, in one of the episodes in later on seasons, he said one of her trainers was an Asian woman, and the woman who taught her her, her special pinch technique was a woman of color, a black woman, and they are killed off. And so you see this thing about like there are strong women of, care, of color in these shows, but they play a very secondary role to the white female in power. And while it doesn't stop me from enjoying Xena or Charmed or Buffy, it doesn't hurt to acknowledge that either because it's in the reality of the show and the genres of which they're, they're in because people think that inclusion just means simply having them. Like, look, we have a gay character. Look, we have a trans character. But it's not enough to just have the cardboard copy, the cardboard cutout of a marginalized group. You know, why should gays be satisfied with having very stereotyped images of gay people? I mean, why should Asians be satisfied with having very stereotyped images of Asian people? Um, why should people be satisfied with just having themselves be shown in the barest bones? And yet, when that is brought up, there's this whole thing like, you know, 
at least they put one character in. If it was really racist, then they wouldn't have that character to begin with. When it's not even just saying that, you know, every character has to, they, yet you have to bring in a black character in every show for it to be politically correct, as some people like to make it sound. It's not about political correctness. It's about if you're going to bring in these black, um, Latino, Asian, gay, trans characters, you can't just put them in there, kill them off, or underuse them, or just make them a plethora of stereotypes and expect people who watch the show to applaud you for inclusion or anything of the like because you're not including anything. You just put them in the show so you can get applause for seemingly having inclusion. The other issue of inclusion is that when it comes to the genres that I mentioned before like sci-fi, fantasy, etc, they are used to having a very particular set of characters so that when you do include some people of color audiences don't always react in a positive way and they use sometimes race and other reasons to dislike those characters and like in Merlin while I understand that there are perfectly valid reasons for people to dislike Guinevere it's frustrating when I watch a clip of Merlin and comments are like why is there a black chick in Camelot this isn't historically accurate or th comments like that it, it boggles me that in a show that's based on a Thorian legend that has dragons and magic, what throws people off is that there's a black woman in the show, a, a mixed race black woman on the show. And the backlash doesn't even come with her brother that much, or the fact that Lancelot is played by a Latino. But with her, it's somehow a bigger issue. I think there's another issue of just having those kind of characters in science fiction and fantasy. Like, peop like there's not a good response with them when you do include them, and therefore that's even becoming a dissonance of, well, when we have them there, are they even like? But I said that seems to be happening more with women than men, which I don't really understand that much, and I don't want to assume why that happens, but I do think it's kind of interesting how there are so many women of color now in fantasy and sci-fi shows that I've watched, whether it be True Blood, Vampire Diaries, even Doctor Who, and um, Merlin, and they're really disliked for really silly reasons. And while I don't want to assume that it's racially motivated, it does seem jarring that they get called names and get bashed when they're smarter than the actual protagonists at times. The issue, I think, is just sometimes people not being aware of things and the implications that they have. For example, I was watching the Nostalgia Critics Disney Summer videos, which I highly recommend. They're very funny, at least even if just for food for thought. I just think they're really interesting to watch. And he was talking about how he didn't see the crows in Dumbo or the Siamese cats in Lady and the Tramp or the song What Makes the Red Man Red in Peter Pan to be racist because to him they just seemed like fun and cool and whatever. And, you know, I, I don't blame him because it's his opinion and all that stuff but I just think that I think that's kind of interesting when I hear people talk about that and I really don't see why those things are racist and I will admit some of them especially the in the Native American Indian one because the writer himself of Peter Pan had probably never interacted with Native American people so all of his information was probably based on the already racist portrayal that he probably got from the Americas but at the same time whether it's malice or ignorance it's still racist and you know I I hate to admit it, especially publicly but the song what makes the red man red I do enjoy that song I think the drum beat is really catchy and it's a very you know it's a Disney fi song it's fun and that is what makes it kind of an earworm for me but I would never defend this song or say that it's you know, a good song to like. It's a very racist song, has very racist stereotypes. It's all more ideas of all Indians are plain Indians and they say how and they wear headdresses just every day all lackadaisical even though it's a sacred headdress and they wouldn't wear it all the time. But you know, not an expert. And you know, the Siamese cats, even though We Are Siamese is probably the most popular song from that movie besides, you know, Bella Note, it, it still doesn't make it any better. And with the whole aspect of the Jim Crow's you know, th considering the time in which Dumbo was made, who was going to find that funny besides Caucasian people? You know, would why would they find the, a black crow named Jim entertaining and 
they were black or Asian or any other um, ethnic group. Why would that be funny to them? You know, that, those are the kind of things I don't think people take in mind. And people will look at it retrospectively and be like, well, because it was made in that time, that means it's like that. But it's okay because now it, we're not racist, so it doesn't matter, so we don't need to be concerned about it. But it's just, it, that's not how it works. Because the issue with those things, especially when Disney and animated shows and movies do have racist principles or have racist ideas, is that these kids watch these movies and they grow up desensitized to it. Because, like when the social critic was talking about when he was a kid and he watched it, he didn't see it that way. They were just cool to him. You're, and how even I enjoy the song, What Makes the Red Man Red, you're putting racism out there, but what you're giving it over is over a cover of cuteness and fun music and, you know, just bright colors and pretty things so that these kids are watching these, these movies and they're not seeing anything inherently wrong with it. Until, hopefully, when they get older and we assume that they will figure it out. But, obviously, that's not the case for everybody because people are saying they don't see anything wrong with it. And so we can't just assume that everyone's going to watch these things and then grow up in this and realize, oh, that's wrong, oh, that wasn't right. And because people aren't getting that, even in the times that we're supposed to be like in this kind of more informed society, there's a problem with the racist butt argument. Because... You're making excuses for things that don't need to be excused. We understand already that certain things are going to be racist. And we understand that certain things are going to be perfect. Don't get me wrong. As a black woman, I am used to not seeing myself in a lot of the media that I watch. I mean, I'm not going to go out of my way to watch genres I'm not interested in or read genres I'm not interested in just so I can get my little bit of black entertainment. You know, I like fantasy, I like sci-fi, I like historical dramas. There are not a lot of black people in it. I am used to that. I get it. And I'm not going to hate a show because it doesn't have, you know, a lot of black people in it. I love Buffy. I love Charm. I love Xena. You know, I love, you know, Merlin. I love a lot of shows that don't have that much inclusion. But I recognize that the fact that, that they don't have inclusion is problematic. You know? But I don't excuse them for it. Because there's no excuse for Charmed not to have more people of color in it as reoccurring characters. Then there's no excuse for Buffy. There isn't. Because as much as we want to say, like even Xena, which takes place in, you know, a different time, it's taking place in a mythical land and it's being made now. And I think Xena does have a lot of, like, they'll have random people of color in there. Not a lot of reoccurring ones, but they'll have random ones in there. So even with, but none of the main characters, but my whole point is just, like, you know, they can, they can make the adjustments. Especially when shows with Buffy and Charm where there's no prior mythology. People, when it comes to mythology, people seem to have this idea of how it should work. You know, when I watch Merlin, or when I talk, watch, um historical things. Everyone seems to have this idea of how it should be, and most of the time they're wrong about it anyway. That's the thing about some of these butt arguments, that they want to be like, but there were none of those types of people there at that time. But it's just like, yes there were. You know, if you, science has been coming up and showing us more about how there were tribes of blacks in, um, in Europe at certain times and that there was interaction and even when and even on top of that you're dealing with legends you know these aren't facts you these aren't set in stone while people of course some of them believe King Arthur was real not doing that but at the same time there are magic and dragons in the show obviously not real so why does it bother you so much that there's a person of color in this medium I don't understand it. Not to mention on top of that, with all the Merther fans who want Arthur and Merlin to be gay so badly, why is why is that okay? But some reason black people that's still funky business, you know? It, it it bothers me because it's built on some kind of illogical reasoning of trying to keep tradition in a medium that they don't seem to understand why it was made that way, you know? When people exclude certain types of people in these stories, when they were more well-rounded, more inclusive, it's because they didn't want 
you to read about them because you didn't want them to know about them, people, because they were the other. And so we now embrace that idea still by perpetuating that myth now because we're still making it seem like if you see a black person in this medieval place, they're the other and they don't belong. It's the same idea now, but because you, because people are so used to it already, they don't see why that's a problem. You know, it's it's difficult to try to explain to people that, like, when you talk about myths like Cinderella and Snow White and stuff like that, those myths don't just exist in Grimm or Perot. They are folk tales from all over the world, and all over the world you can find a Snow White story, a Cinderella story, everywhere. It's not just a European thing. But people are so used to it being grim or Hans Anderson Christian that they do not accept that fact. And it makes it hard to have these kind of discussions because they have this whole idea in their head of what it's supposed to be like and people are afraid to challenge that in the media because that's their idea of what it should be like. When people try to address that fact and why it's faulty, they get called it. They're trying to just, you know, um, uh, um, try to appease to minorities when that's not the case. Like, I have no, like, with people, someone mentioned, like, do I want Ned Stark or someone just in Game of Thrones to be randomly black? No, okay? I'm not saying you have to take a book series and make the main character black to make me happy or to make a person of color happy. No, that's not what anyone is saying. But you cannot tell me that the only way Snow White can be is white when her fairy tale is not unique to Grimm at all. You cannot tell me that it's weird to have black people in Greek mythology when there are black people in Greek mythology. You cannot tell me that it's wrong to have a black Guinevere in an Arthurian legend when there were black people at the time that these Arthurian legends could have taken place. If you think that Snow White should be Caucasian because in your mind you have always seen her as Caucasian and seeing her as Caucasian is what seems right to you, just say that. You know, it's fair. No one's gonna yell at you because that's, that's the way you've been taught the entire story. Snow White's been Caucasian all my life. Until recently when I just learned about the origin of fairy tales. It's not wrong for you to look at a character and hear them and see white and when you don't, and you're not, you, and you're so used to hearing that for your entire life that now when someone tells you, oh, they could be black, you're like, what? Really? It's normal because now you're, because you're, it's breaking the thing that you've always seen. You know, it's it, where no one is going to yell at you for acknowledging the fact that you've been used to a certain image and that when it's changed, it freaks you out. Media works to reflect what audiences want and what they expect. When you watch on a certain show, you expect certain things. And the media and statistics have told us that, you know, when there are people of color leads, people do not often gravitate to them if they're not of that racial group. If the if same movie comes out with Michael Fassbender and Reese Witherspoon and um, Jennifer Aniston and Angelina Jolie, everyone will go flock to that because people know them. That's who they're familiar with and they're the default. And so everyone can accept that and gravitate towards that. If a movie comes out with just like Carrie Washington, Shania Lathan, Nia Long, and Gabrielle Union, you're going to get not even half of that audience because it's a completely different group of people they assume when you see a whole bunch of black people together in a movie it's gonna be black people doing black things with black jokes and whatever whatever that's the thing about a default a default means that there is gonna be nothing about this that will be odd to you you don't have to watch this movie and be concerned because what they eat is weird how they talk is weird how their family works is weird because that's normal However, if you go in to look and see a movie that takes place in, you know, Japan and the way their culture is different, the way they eat is different, the way they address people is different, so people have a hard time accepting that because that's so different from what they're used to. It's the whole idea of the default and the other. And it's hard to get over. But the answer is not excusing the fact that that exists. You can't just be like, well, it is racist to do that, but, you know, blah, 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 because it's, you don't need the but. It's racist. Period. When something is racist or intolerant or just ignorant, you know, let's, because a lot of things aren't even racist because they are trying to do it in a mean way. It's just, it's based on ignorance. You acknowledge it. 
and you recognize why it is that way. But don't excuse it, because there's no reason to. You know, it, when I was reading, to kind of put a small example to bring up my comic book side, I was reading um, the Black Canary Green um, Arrow when they get married and whatever, and Green Arrow has a biracial son. And half, half white, half black. In certain, certain images, he looked like a mixed race child. He has some black features, some white features, or whatever. And other times, he will have completely white features. He will not have any sort of evidence of color whatsoever. So much so to the point that when I was reading the one edition, I was confused as to who this new character was because he didn't look anything like this other kid. And you would see images of him as a little kid with his mother, who was a black woman, and you would look at this kid and just think, how did he come out of her? No evidence of any sort of racial difference whatsoever. But he would never look too black. He would always either look mixed, because he had blonde hair, he would either always look mixed or white. But he would never look black. It's just one of those things, it's so glaring. And it's something that's so kind of, you could just be like, oh, it's just bad artist, bad whatever. But as someone who is of that background, it's not a little thing to me. And finally, to get to the real argument I have to hear all the time, that will probably people bring up as well. That all of these things are escapism. They're made for people to enjoy and to have fun with. And it's for them to escape the realities of this world. That's great, except how do I escape? How do I have escapism if when I watch a show that I like and the only character I could relate to on maybe a physical and sometimes even cultural level gets killed after her second appearance in the show? How do I, how does, you know, a gay man have um, escapism when he watches a character who is also a, a gay man, but his only characteristic is that he is a gay man. He has no personality, he has nothing going for him, he is just a stereotype. How do you have escapism when you are disabled, and every time you see a disabled character on television, they are portrayed as either being useless or incapable of any sort of um, independence at all? How is it escapism when you are an Asian person and you can only be two types of characters? You are either the nerdy kid or you're the kung fu kid. How is it escapism when every time there's a Muslim character on a show, something about terrorism or Taliban has to be brought up in some way, shape, or form? You're not, because you're not escaping shit. When, if I still have to watch a show that has a bunch of stereotypes for black people, how am I escaping? It's not escapism if everyone can't escape. 